hello uh, welcome to today's class uh, this would be our fifth class on intelligent agent and we will be talking about a table driven agent in today's class uh, so uh, agent is the combination of our architecture that we are using plus the agent program so architecture is the hardware part uh, it's the computing device that we are using to build our agent along with the sensor and actuators so for example in a simple case it may be our raspberry pi board with sensors and actuators and the hardware along with the software the agent program uh, the combination of it gives us the agent so agent program implements the agent function and agent function as we know uh, tells us what is the action that needs to be performed by the agent in response to the current percept sequence um, now there are different ways to build the agent program and in today's class we will talk about table driven agent so here is the pseudo code for the table driven agent and as you can see in the pseudo code the table driven agent takes as input the current percept and and it determines it returns the action and that needs to be performed so based on the current percept it does it do some computation we will see how the computation is done and it determines what action needs to be performed so in the computation it comes up what action needs to be performed and that action is returned so this is what uh, the table driven um, input and output looks like table driven agent and if we look inside uh, how it may be implemented is that it maintains a history of the percept that means the percept sequence so it maintains the history of percept seen up to that point of time so as time progresses the table driven agent will keep on building this history of percepts uh, it's a sequence and initially it will be empty to start with um, moreover uh, this agent also maintains a lookup table and this table tells and this and it is this table that basically tells the agent uh, what is the action needs to be performed uh, based on the percept sequence so it will maintain a table where for each percept sequence the corresponding action will be listed uh, so this is what the table driven agent maintains and how it comes up with the action the computation that is the computation is only two lines of code as you can see here two lines of pseudo code uh, the first step is to append the current percept which was the input to the program the current percept is appended to this history of percepts so we append percept which was the input to the end of percepts which was the history of uh, percept seen up seen up to this point of time basically this is the percept sequence so that is the first thing we do we build up the history of percept and then uh, based on this percept sequence that we obtain we look up this percept sequence in the table and in the table we will find out for this percept sequence what is the action that needs to be performed so the lookup function will return the action the action will be determined from the table and that particular action will be returned and and that action will be performed by the actuators so this is the pseudo code for the table driven agent uh, if it's not clear let us look at one example to make it more clear and we will go back to our vacuum cleaner agent 
and let us first see what we mean by building the history of percept or the percept sequence as is mentioned initially uh, this percept sequence will be a empty list but then as time progresses we will keep on getting percept and those percept will keep on getting appended to the list so let us say at the first time step at time step t1 the percept we get is a clean so this is the percept that has been input to this uh, pseudocode and now <coughs> in this step we append the current percept to this list hence uh, after appending this is how the history of percept will look like so that is what happens at time step t1 now let's say in time, time step t2 the current percept is room b and b is clean now again we will append that percept to the percept sequence and the percept sequence already have a percept in its list and when we append the new percept uh, this will be the new percept sequence a clean which happened at time step t1 followed by b clean which happened at time step t2 uh, proceeding like like this let's say that at time step t3 the percept is b dirty so now again uh, this percept will get appended to the list and this list now have all already have two entries so when we append uh, the new percept to this percept sequence the list will become a clean b clean and then b dirty so like this as percept keeps on coming with every time step this history of percept or the percept sequence will keep on building so i, I hope that clarifies what we mean by sequence of percept uh, now let us talk about the lookup table now to talk about before it before we talk about the lookup table um, one important uh, uh, question is what would be the size of that table uh, but before we jump to that question uh, let us see that for this uh, vacuum cleaner agent uh, we already know that it had two sensors so what are the two sensors one sensor to uh, sense the current location uh, and the other sensor to sense and uh, dirt that means whether the room is dirty or not and and the location sensor can have two different values which are a or b the agent can be either in room a or in room b so these are the two possibilities for the location sensor uh, for the dart sensor again we can have two different again we can have two possible values and the possible values are the room is dirty or clean so uh, based on this observation we can say that in at any particular moment of time we can have four different percepts that's 2 into 2 that gives us four different percept uh, at every time step so let's say at time step t1 what can be the percept it may be either a clean or a dirty or b clean or b dirty um, so there are four possibilities the percept would be one of these four so like that in every time step i can ha we have four different possibilities for a percept the percept can be a clean a dirty b clean or b dirty similarly in the next time step what will be the percept 
there are four possibilities it can be a clean a dirty b clean or b dirty and so on so i hope it is clear how we came up with this value for because we have two sensors and each sensor can have two possible values so two into two uh, four different possibilities now let us um, talk about the lookup table so in lookup table in one column we will maintain the percept sequence and in the other column we will maintain the action that needs to be performed for the corresponding percept sequence so we have two columns and now for the vacuum cleaner uh, agent uh, when we say at time step t1 we can have one of these four percept so at time step t1 how many possibilities uh, for a percept the percept can be any one of these four so now we place them in our table and say that for the percept sequence a clean the action need, that needs to be performed is move right <coughs> for uh, the percept sequence a dirty the action that needs to be performed is suck the dirt uh, for the percept sequence b clean the action that needs to be performed is move left and for the percept sequence b dirty the action that needs to be performed is suck so we in this lookup table we list what is the action that needs to be performed for each percept sequence and for time step t1 we have four different possibilities now as we move to the second time step um as we move to time step t2 now for each of these four percept we can again have four possibilities we have four possibilities for a let's make it more clear by taking as we proceed so in time step t2 as we move to time step t2 for each of the four entries here we we can again have four different possibilities so what do we mean by that let's say let's say at time step t1 the percept that actually happened is a clean now considering that uh, the percept that happened in time step t1 is a clean now the second percept can be either a clean or a dirty or b clean or b dirty and hence for this for this entry a clean we can have four different possibilities in time step t2 so in time step t2 for this percept a clean i may have a clean a clean or a clean a dirty a clean b clean or a clean a dirty so these four entries are made for this entry a clean similarly if we consider that at time step t1 the actual percept that happened is a dirty now considering that for this um, percept a dirty again we have four different possibilities a clean a dirty b clean or a sorry this should be b dirty so a clean a dirty b clean or b dirty so so again for if we consider that at time step t1 the percept that happened is a dirty then in time step t2 we can have a dirty a clean a dirty a dirty a dirty b clean and a dirty b dirty so like that we will have four different entries for b clean also uh, because i don't have space i have not shown it here and for b dirty again we can have four different entries so for each of these four entries can have four entries on their own so hence for time step 
T2 we will have 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 16 possibilities so we'll have 16 entries when we go to time step T2 4 entries for A clean 4 entries for A dirty 4 entries for B clean and 4 entries for B dirty so that's 4 into 4 total 16 entries uh, at time step T2 so now how many entries will there be in the table so in for time step T1 we already had 4 so that's 4 and and for time step T2 we will have 16 so total entries in the table will be 4 plus 16 so I hope that's clear so that was for time step T2 now as we go to time step T3 what will happen for every entry that we made in time step T2 how many entries we made we made 16 entries for time step T2 and now for each of these 16 entries again we will have four different possibilities A clean A dirty B clean B dirty so for each of these 16 entries we can have four four entries so at time step t3 we will have 16 into four entries that's four cube so we will have 16 into 4 that's 64 which is actually four cube entries that will be made in time step t3 so why again why why 64 because we had 16 entries in time step t2 and for each of these 16 entries uh, we will have four entries each so that will be 16 into 4 64 entries uh, by the way i am not showing all the 16 entries for time step t2 because i don't have i did not have space here but please be clear that we will have 16 entries for time step t2 although i am showing it only eight here uh, so 64 entries are made for time step t3 so at the end of time step t3 how many entries are there in the table that will be 4 plus 4 square plus 4 cube 4 for time step t1 4 square that's 16 for time step t2 and 4 cube that's 64 for time step t3 so as we keep on increasing the number of time step uh, we will need to maintain a bigger and bigger uh, table uh, in general after n time steps the total number of entries in the table will be 4 plus 4 square plus 4 cube up to 4 to the power n so that's summation from i equal to 1 to n 4 to the power i so this is for our vacuum cleaner agent uh, now in general talking in general if we say p is the set of possible percepts and t is the lifetime of the agent then the lookup table will con contain summation of t equal to 1 up to t uh, size of the uh, set of percept to the power t this number of entries will be there in the lookup table um, we already saw this formula for the vacuum cleaner agent uh, but to mention it again in case of the vacuum cleaner agent uh, the set of possible percept was this a clean a dirty b clean b dirty so the size of the set was 4 and if i consider the total time step to be n and then the total number of entries in the table will be according to this formula 4 plus 4 square plus 4 cube plus uh, up to 4 to the power n and we already saw this why uh, i have clearly explained it i think um now going forward uh, so now uh, the vacuum cleaner agent was a simple case where we had only four possibilities 
but in case of a more um, for more real life um, agents um, this um, size of this set will be bigger and uh, our lifetime of the agent will also be big and hence the we, the agent will need to maintain a table that is very large and that's the drawback of the table driven agent uh, if we want to maintain a table uh, the size of this lookup table can be very large uh, and it can be so large that actually it may not be we may not have any enough space to store it uh, to give you some real life example uh, from the book uh, if we consider a taxi driving agent it generates this many amount of entries if you consider uh, one hour of driving based on uh, the camera sensor the camera sensor is uh, providing you frames at 30 frames per second uh, and each of the frame will have a certain number of pixels um, with some color density and uh, with that many amount of data that is coming every second for one hour of driving uh, the table may need to have this many number of entries I and mean, it's not possible to store such a big table um, and another example is your chess playing agent uh, if we want to maintain a table uh, if we want to have a table which will tell us that this position make this move for the next position make this move then uh, how many positions are possible in a chessboard that may be at least 10 to the power 150 which is very large number so again we cannot have a table to tell us uh, what action that needs to be performed for each move if we can have a table it becomes very easy uh, to build the agent because we just have to maintain a table and we don't need to do any uh, complex uh, programming we just look up at the table and make the move but now uh, the size of the tables are so large that it is not possible to store them uh, in a agent and even if <coughs> And even if we are somehow able to store it, uh, we may not be able to, we may not have time to fill up all the entries in such a large table. We may spend our whole lifetime and still not be able to uh, make entries for each of the entries in such a large table. Um, and uh, if we consider a learning agent, uh, a learning agent, if we use machine learning, uh, which uh, agent which can learn uh, even the agent will not be able to uh, learn uh, the correct entries for so many number of uh, entries it may either need um, a lot of examples which means it will require humongous number of uh, training examples if you consider supervised learning or uh, so a learning agent will also have difficulty to fill up uh, all the entries um, based on experience and even a designer may not have guidelines to fill up uh, all the entries in the table so these are some of the drawback of the table driven agent um, so so instead of uh, having uh, a table driven agent uh, in artificial intelligence uh, what uh, people try to do is actually to write simple maybe la uh, very simple uh, or maybe very short programs um, and which can again which which can again which can still uh, be able to make rational uh, actions um, in, without using a uh, large table so that's the goal of AI is, is that instead of using uh, such large table how to write simple programs uh, but still be able to make rational uh, decisions so so that's why in the next few class we'll look at some other types of agent to 
today we looked at uh, table driven agent in next class we will look at a few other types of agent uh, and with this actually i would like to end today's class so see you in the next class uh, bye